I am so ready to get out of the house. I am ready, ready to live in a van if it means that I can just leave <laughs> where I live. I love where I live, but I have never been home for this long ever. I don't think ever in my life since I was a little kid. And I'm starting to go a little bit crazy. So it's time to get out. So here we go. We're camping the whole way, way out in the wilderness, same kinds of places we're filming. So we're basically doing this whole trip. And I think the time we'll see the most of people is probably when we're driving on the freeway. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be definitely unlike anything we've ever done before. So here goes. First stop, Lake Tahoe. Day one went pretty well. Took a little getting used to setting up the gear on a mountainside and uh, dragging it through the brush and the forest. Uh, but it went well and it felt so incredibly good to play a show again. So with uh, day one in the books, we headed to Yosemite. Yosemite is one of my favorite places anywhere on earth. And so to have the chance to play music there was just incredible. It's one of those things that never would have happened in any other year. When we were done playing the set, we got on the road and headed out towards Mono Lake. We were hoping to film a set here, but when we got out there, it was hot. And I mean like hot, hot, too hot to be out in the sun and do anything. We decided to wait out the heat in the sun until later in the afternoon, but then a storm rolled in and we didn't want to get rained on and get soaking wet. So we had to call it and bail, unfortunately. So we settled for a quick hike around the rim of an ancient volcano, really not a bad plan B for a <laughs> rained out show. And uh, then we got on the road. This is another spot we thought about maybe playing a set and filming, but it ended up being a stopover point. So we found a campsite uh, spot to rest for the night. And uh, here you can see us living in a van down by the river. We uh, spent the next day hiking and got some mountain swims in. <laughs> and then we got on the road to the salt flats. The crazy thing about the salt flats is you're just driving on a road and you're driving, you're driving, and then all of a sudden the road just stops in the middle of nowhere. And then you're on the salt flats. You can drive out on them really as far as you want, but it just feels like this vastness that goes on forever. You feel like you're on the moon driving a lunar rover or something. You have no idea how fast you're going. You can be doing 90 and it feels like you're doing nothing. We drove out on the salt flats the day before we shot the set, just to make sure we knew where we were going. You can get stuck out there and it's a pretty bad situation if you do. We camped nearby and woke up around 3.30 the next day to make it out to the salt flats before dawn. This is what the load-in looked like. We were out there in the darkness, racing against the dawn and trying extremely hard not to let any of the gear fall on the ground and touch the salt because it will destroy everything it touches. It was probably the most challenging of all the sets and we were running on very little sleep, but it was worth every minute of it. I think it may be my favorite one of the sets. It was just one of the craziest experiences I've ever had. I still can't believe I got to play out there. After a long drive down a lot of sketchy dirt roads, we got to our destination in Idaho in the middle of the night. We couldn't see anything, but we camped on the edge of the canyon where we planned to film the next day, and this is the view we woke up to in the morning. We set up the gear on the edge of the canyon, and we didn't see another person the entire time we were out there. It was really, really remote. We are in the middle of nowhere. Hope oh, there's home. Hi, Van. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello, keyboard. And there's the canyon. And we are perched right on the edge. Surrounded by wildfire smoke coming from San Francisco. Here's Jeffrey in one of his favorite spots to shoot from on top of the van. And here is Juno, who apparently thinks she is driving to Craters of the Moon. We thought about filming a set at Craters of the Moon, but when we got there, the wildfire smoke was still pretty thick and everything was a lot of gray. So we decided to just take the day to play around in the park 
and then hit the road and continue on our way. We stopped over in Mesa Falls, Idaho as we headed west. These drive days were so different than what drive days usually look like on tour. Usually it's freeways and rest stops off I-95 and you know we were putting miles down but it looked a lot different than what it usually looks like. We drove through Yellowstone on our way and uh, eventually popped out the other side into the Beartooth Wilderness. This was one of my favorite places of everywhere we went. It's just an incredible place and there's not a whole lot of people there. We drove through the mountains at sunset on this crazy hairpin turn winding road that crests the summit and winds its way back down looking for spots to film the next morning. And we saw a bunch of ones that looked pretty good but we finally came around a corner and both of us were like, that's it, that's the one. You guys, this may be one of the most stunningly beautiful places I have ever been, much less played. We are hiking the gear up and down this uh, mountainside to where I'm playing. So I kind of feel like I'm dying at the moment. I'm a sea level girl and we are way up in the mountains, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be super cool. Well, here's the load in at Beartooth. There was a lot of hiking up and down the mountain and uh, <laughs> a lot of wind that knocked over a lot of camera tripods. We ended up uh, stabilizing them with boulders and uh, there was a lot of hiding in the van to warm up. Well, on my part, while Jeffrey set up a lot of the gear. I really do owe him for this one. <laughs> this one was cold, windy and cold and stunningly beautiful. You guys, I'm playing this set without my favorite hat. Not sure how this is gonna go. That hat is sort of like a Samson's hair kind of thing. It's where I derive all of my uh, all of my power. And uh, I'm a little worried about how this is gonna go, but it's freezing cold out there and it's super windy. And if my hat blew away down the mountainside to be lost forever, I would be so, 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 so sad. So here we are. We'll see how it goes. This place is crazy. Well, the set went fine, and my hat lived to see another day. And then we packed up and loaded out. You can see here, Jeffrey is carrying the keyboard back to the van up the mountainside while I have a very important meeting with my assistant in the van. We spent another day playing in the mountains and found a great campsite and then got back on the road. This is Juno's road pose. You can tell she takes the drives very seriously. We had planned to head to the Badlands next, but it was supposed to be 104 degrees, so we took a day to let the weather cool off and went and hung out in Custer State Park in South Dakota instead, which was absolutely incredible. And then we headed to the Badlands. It was only maybe 98 when we got there, which is better than 104, but we got a campsite with a view. Well, we're here in the Badlands. Woke up at about 5.30 this morning to our again from the Badlands. I thought we weren't going to film today at all, but uh, while we were packing up camp, the wind settled down and the storm blew through. So we ended up uh, filming anyways. It was pretty windy and, and hot and crazy. Um, it's a super kind of unforgiving, hostile feeling environment, um, but it's pretty starkly beautiful and incredible out here. So it was almost the set that wasn't, and then it was the set that was. So we did it. Yay. Passed out in the van in the air conditioning. Lazy assistant. We left the Badlands and started the portion of the trip where we did a lot of freeway miles. A lot of freeway miles. Oh my God, we made it. Someone is happy to be out of the van. 
Playing in Maine was super special for me. A lot of the spots we went were places I'd never been before, but Casco Bay is a place I've been coming forever and keep coming back to. After Maine, we started the drive back west with a quick stopover in Cleveland to pick up some of my new records from the pressing plant. So we went from Maine to Taos, New Mexico. You can see Juno's got her drive pose on again. Juno's a great co-pilot. She is ready to give directions at any moment. After a lot of long hours in the van, we finally made it to New Mexico and found a campsite outside Taos. We decided to film a moonrise set. It was a full moon and a harvest moon and just a beautiful spot to do it out there in the middle of the desert. After that, we headed north to Colorado and first stop was Breckenridge. So here's the rig, uh, got the digital stage piano here, Yamaha CP4, same one I play in Ghostlight, love this thing. This one's pretty simple, just goes into this DI here, thanks Telefunken, and then it goes into this, uh, this box here. <clears throat> so, got the left and right piano lines here. This one is for the zither, or lap harp, which is this thing here sitting on top. And uh, I'd never played one of these until right before this uh, road trip started. I wanted something that would let me pluck the strings like I do in the piano and uh, mess around with uh, this thing. This is called a wand. It's kind of like an ebo. It's one of my favorite things to use inside the piano. Uh, but it won't do anything on a digital keyboard. So um, I got a zither so that sounds out of it and you can pluck the strings uh, and then sometimes I'll uh, I'll drum on it too and uh, it goes through all these effects here so I can get a lot of weird sounds out of a pretty simple instrument and I uh, grabbed this pickup that I usually use on a piano stuck inside one of the sound holes and just popped it on the back here so that's how it runs into all the effects here along with the lines from the piano and then uh, coming out of this thing there's a line here that goes up and over uh, to my in-ears yes. uh, I use in-ears out here because Andy's not better uh, and B, a lot of the places we've been filming it would be a little bit weird to have an amp out here and blasting loud music um, they're usually the kind of places that people go to get away and find some quiet and uh, for the most part we haven't really seen people out where we've been but um, when we were in Yosemite and some of the more popular spots there's definitely people cruising by from time to time and we didn't want to spoil the outdoor stillness for everybody so it's basically silent um, you can hear me pluck those other strings and you can hear the sound of the piano keys just making noise like that uh, but there's no amplification, so it's a really uh, basically silent setup. And then, uh, <clears throat> so the zither and the piano, they go through the effects and into the box there. And then I'll show you the rest of the rig here. Here, follow the snake all the way over to the van, which is where the recording setup lives and also where we've been living for the last two months. Uh, Let's see, on the outside here, we've got all the essentials. Definitely cannot not have coffee. Very important. Probably the most important part of this whole thing. Uh, here's all the cases and whatnot. And Those all slide into the back of the van here, underneath our bed. And then there's more crates of gear and food and stuff like that over here. So we've basically used every square inch of this thing, but I'll take you inside and show you the recording setup. Also say hi to Jeffrey. Hi. <laughs> Jeffrey is my husband and also uh, my videographer. He's been running all the footage for all of these all the drone stuff which has been super super cool to be able to travel just the two of us three of us if you count our dog and uh, 
and be able to do all these sets. So, leaving the land of coffee. Goodbye, coffee. I love you so much. And coming into the van here. So here's the uh, here's the front, and then this is where we keep the recording setup. So. It's all inside to keep it out of the heat so it doesn't overheat and also um, the conditions out here are often really dusty or dirty or in the case of the salt flats a lot of salt that would corrode all this and ruin it. Um, but the heat is the biggest thing so we keep all this stuff inside, cut bug nets to keep the nasties away. Uh, and so yeah, the snake that we were following into the van comes in right here. And these are the inputs from the zither and the piano goes into this interface. And then these are the returns. So these lines are going uh, still in the same snake, but those go back out and send the sound to my in-ears uh, and to the camera to sync them. Um, and then here is uh, the recording setup. So it's really simple. It's just a keyboard and a zither, so it's a pretty stripped down, easy setup. So that's how that all works. And this is our home, tight quarters, but it's got everything we need. We've got the bed, a uh, spot for the dog down here, and a spot for all the gear, and then all of our clothes and food and stuff like that live in the cabinets. And there's a shower up here that folds down and a toilet in there that folds up. So we have everything we need to travel without uh, really having to leave our little bubble of a van, which has been really important during a pandemic <clears throat> to be able to travel and not have to make a bunch of stops so that we can do it safe and make sure that we're not uh, moving the needle on this thing in the wrong direction. So what else can I tell you about this whole thing? The van is four wheel drive, which has let us get up some pretty nasty roads to get to the kind of places where we can film these sessions. Uh, we've been looking for really remote spots with a lot of solitude. I feel like it's a lot more fun for me to play out here when there's no one around and no evidence of people and I can really just kind of sink into the place and uh, get into that mode rather than getting distracted by people cruising by. And uh, what else? Brackenridge is beautiful. All you Colorado people are real lucky. Oh yeah, so the power for this whole thing. Uh, the van, hello van, we named her Vandemic. Uh, the van has a crazy battery system in it that charges while we drive. So when we're parked, we don't need to run a generator or anything like that. Um, it can run air conditioning for 12 hours pretty much silently. Uh, more importantly, it can power all the gear for probably close to 50 or 60 hours if we ever wanted to play that long, the ultimate long gig. Okay. So yeah, that's the tour. That's how all this stuff has been working out. I think the biggest challenges have been the weather is always crazy. Um, today's the first day that we set up not in an insane windstorm in quite a while, which was a nice change. And then just trying to find these spots. We've been doing a lot of legwork ahead of time looking at satellite images and trying to find spots that would be cool. But when it comes down to it, there's a lot of just driving down pretty gnarly forest service roads and kind of seeing uh, what comes up and finding the spot by just driving around and figuring it out. So it's been an adventure. It's kind of the polar opposite of a usual tour. Um, we don't really see anybody and there's no audience obviously. And also there's just very little planning. We're living in a van and filming kind of wherever we want, whenever we want and figuring it out as we go. So rather than having set dates and a schedule, we just kind of drive wherever. <laughs> It's been really fun. After Breckenridge, we decided we wanted to try to film a set in the very last of the aspens, if we could find any that still had their leaves in the color. So we ended up on Hard Scrabble Mountain, and I played the set where the last of the leaves were blowing off the tree and landing on my keyboard as I played, which was pretty cool. Definitely felt like the changing of the seasons. Fall was just about over. The tour was just about over. The whole thing just had a vibe. We left Colorado and headed for Utah for the last show of the Wilderness Sessions. We're out here in Moab scouting potential spots to film and play a set the next few days and uh, 
It's looking pretty good out here. Yeah, not too shabby. This is another spot we thought about filming. It would have been absolutely incredible, but the road to get the van out here was a little crazier than we were comfortable doing. So we continued down the road and ended up finding this incredible spot by Monitor and Merrimack. Look at this. Cactus over here. Cactus over there. The little spiky ones are actually the ones that get you. Cactus over here under my bench. I had to be careful not to squish it when I fell into the sand. Dog, cactus over here, Juno dog, cactus over there, Juno dog, hi. Hi, Juno! Ooh. Victory! Last set of the tour. Well, that was incredibly fun, and this place is gorgeous, but it is so insanely hot. So much sunscreen. Ugh. And there are so many things in the desert that want to kill you. We've both been attacked by like seven different kinds of cacti, cactuses, cacti, while we're trying to set this thing up. They're in our shoes and my hands and all over my dog. Yeah, I don't know. Desert, kind of ready to go back to the woods. <laughs> then again, you know what they say. Kind of bittersweet to be heading home. We're also a little road weary after two months of living in a van and our own bed and a real shower sounds pretty nice right now. We took a day to explore Moab and celebrate the end of the trip. Then we got back in the van and started the drive home. We are literally in the middle of nowhere. Nevada. <laughs> Well, here it is. The last night on the road, the last campsite of the tour. This has been an incredible two months. I'm so glad we did this. I don't know how I would have made it through this year without this trip. It's been so incredibly good for me to go out and play night after night again. Well, I guess in this case, day after day, weird time in the afternoon after weird time in the afternoon. But being out on the road again and getting to take inspiration from each of these places every time I sit down to play a set has just been the best thing ever. Last day in the van. We did it. Yay! Ladies, get you a man that will drive your pregnant ass from coast to coast and set up your gear for you. <laughs> Thanks, babe! <laughs> Now that it's all over, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys that supported the Wilderness Sessions and tuned into the streams and made the whole thing possible. It was a crazy idea and a crazy trip and just a crazy project all the way around and we couldn't have pulled it off without you guys. So thank you for being part of this and I will see you out there when we can all be together again.